Our permits didn't go through in time, so we're not starting the house build this year. But the first project we're gonna start is building a solar kiln. And the first step is we'll build the base for the solar kiln and we'll see whether we'll finish everything before winter or not, but the base will be the start. And the first step is to get materials. We are making uh, eight, 18 foot eight long solar kiln. So we'll need a 20 foot long pieces. So that's why we're bringing our equipment trailer to the lumber yard to get some materials. And we're back with some pressure treated lumber and uh, OSB for the floor. So why do we want to build a solar kiln? We have 40 acres of a forest in Vermont and uh, we'll be felling some trees. Uh, actually, we already felled some trees that came out of the driveway and uh, we'll be felling more uh, for the house side. And now you can also mill those trees with the sawmill that we just got. So the next step is to dry the wood so that it can be used, for example, for siding or for floors uh, in the house. Solar kiln is uh, kind of like a shed with a corrugated plastic roof that uh, heats up the inside, kind of like a greenhouse and um, with fans. Um, so the air movement inside will dry out um, the wood. So that's the first thing we want to build. We're using the Virginia Tech solar kiln design as the basis and we have modified it a little bit to extend it uh, longer to 18 foot 8 inches so that we can do 16 foot uh, boards inside. And um, we also modified it such that we are going to put it on kind of skids on the bottom so that uh, we can move it if necessary. And we have narrowed it slightly if in case we ever decide to try to put it on our equipment trailer then we can try to attempt that. So first step, today we're starting with the floor assembly, which is all made from pressure treated wood. And actually the first thing we need to do before we can start on that is to build the second sawbuck so that we have a place to cut the boards. So 31, three quarter. Yeah, so if you cut that one off square, this isn't a square end here. Ready? Yep. yep. So 31 three quarters. 31 three quarters. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's still like that. I want to. Okay. Is this piece long enough to get another? Yep. Okay. So yeah. that's two pieces. Yep. And there are two more. Then we'll take this one. So you can put four screws. Nice. Okay. Yep. Done. Done. Okay, we have sawbuck number two done. Simple, but effective. With our two new sawhorses that we'd just built, we were ready to get started on the solar kiln floor assembly. The first thing to do was get the skids made. 
The skids were being made out of two 2x12s on each side. We'd laminated them together and nailing them together. But before we could do that, we had to cut them to length. So we brought the 2x12s over and put them on our saw horses, measured off the length, and then cut them down. We were taking this really carefully, making a couple of measurements each time, sticking to the old adage of measure twice, cut once. And fortunately, we did it all correctly. No mistaken cuts were made, which was really good because these 2x12s were really expensive. So we did not want to mess these up. The other thing that we did, as well as cutting them to length, was make a little notch in the lower corner at either end. This would mean that if we actually drag the skids along the ground, the bottom corner wouldn't dig in. It's kind of like on the end of skis, you turn up the ends. Same idea here, just to try and help that to, to avoid digging into the ground. We made that just a three inch cutout. We didn't really have any specific reasons for that. That just felt like a sensible number to us and kind of looked right. It also meant that we weren't compromising the space where the 2x8 joists would fit in later. The other thing we did was cut out a notch at either end of the skids. This is where the 2x8 joists at either end would rest. The ones in the middle will be in joist hangers, but we wanted cutouts at the end where they would sit resting on the 2x12. So these 2x12s that we cut, these are going to be two on each side along the long edge. And we'll have floor joists uh, coming in um, perpendicular to them in the middle. So now I'm going to lay out where the forgers will go. The first step we've done here is to go down with the tape and the speed square and a pencil and we've done a load of layout lines. So specifically we've put the markings on here for where the joist hangers and the joists will go and then also for our nails that we're going to be using to join these two 2x12s two together. First we'll join them together and then we'll nail in the joist hangers. One side of the joist hangers, yeah. yeah. Once we had all the measurements lined up and marked on the skids, we were ready to go down and start nailing them together. We used some clamps at the same time just to make sure that as we were nailing these together, they were held really tightly. We also put nails in staggered from both sides as well to hopefully make this a really, really strong connection. Once they were joined together, we were then able to add the joist hangers using special hanger nails to do this. This took a while to get done, but what we did is went down with one side of the joist hangers and getting that nailed in first, making sure that was perfectly lined up using a scrap of wood, and then we were ready to, uh, to get things assembled. One thing we forgot to do when we were first working on the skids and cutting those to length was to add this extra sort of shoulder brace at either end. In my initial designs, I knew we were going to have a little bit of leftover 2x12, so rather than letting that go to waste, we decided to make these extra shoulder supports, and that'll just make each corner even thicker and hopefully make it slide a little bit more smoothly along the ground. So we just cut these to the right size and then nailed them in place. So this is how far we got today. We have nailed together the skids on each side and we have added the joist hangers. We are not sure whether we will be able to finish the whole solar kiln before the winter, but we definitely want to finish the base, the floor system, so that we can um, stack the milled lumber on top of it. Yeah, we've got uh, some other projects that we want to work on before winter closes in, so we do want to get all the wood milled. Got some things at the RV, so trying to get the solar kiln finished might just be a stretch too far. It's also given rain for the next couple of days, which is yeah. probably going to happen more and more throughout uh, winter to uh, November next week. So uh, so we're going to really just be getting out here when we can, when we have good weather. Hopefully after this weekend, we'll have some good sunny days next week and we can get out and make some more progress on the kiln floor. Yeah, so this was the first episode of the solar kiln build and we'll uh, try to document um, all the times that we work on it. <laughs>